Girl, I'm not worthy of your matchless grace. You're worthy. Welcome to tonight's Bible class. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace giving thanks to you. Thank you for your many and wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out and study another portion of your word, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins rather than by our thoughts and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for everything you have done and thank you for everything that you continue to do. For this is our prayer in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And tonight's Bible class teacher. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study. Now we rise to give God glory and we still rise to give him praise for our great God is in fact worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the lord is great and greatly to be praised we have come here today because we realize that god is still in the blessing business it was only by his mercy, it was only by his love, and it is only by his amazing grace that we are still in this place on this side of eternity. Listen, if you know that nobody but the Lord brought you through last week's hurdles, if you know that nobody but the Lord brought you over last week's challenges, if you know that nobody but the Lord has ushered you into this day, then you ought to pause for station identification and say, thank you, Lord, for one more day. Come on, someone. I'm fishing for a witness and I shouldn't have to fish very long. Thank you, Lord for one more day. Yes, we may still have issues. Yes, we may still have some challenges, but God's hand is still up on our lives and he's protecting us each and every day. And for this, we should be immeasurably and eternally grateful. Now, listen, if you are visiting this channel, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. We are excited and delighted to have you come our way. And it is our prayer that something is said that will propel you to greater heights, even on a brand new week. Take a moment and share this message with as many of your family and friends as you possibly can. We just believe and we know that as God pours into us, he expects for us to share those blessings to others as well. And now to my brothers and sisters, the superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ. You already know what time it is. Oh, how sweet it still is to be a child of the King. Now, if you have your Bibles, if you have your electronic devices, why don't you navigate over, open up your Bible, meet us or beat us. Second Chronicles, the 17th chapter. Second Chronicles, chapter 17. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because he walked in the former ways of his father, David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father, and walked in his commandments, and not according to the acts of Israel." 
Family, we would like to continue in our thought, theme, and thrust, developing your winning strategy. Developing your winning strategy. Family, everyone desires to win at some level. If I were to poll this august body of believers even on tonight and say, take a moment and chime in, who loves to lose all the time? Come on, you already know that not many, if any, would raise their hands. Because we don't desire to take a loss. We are trying to be successful in every walk of our lives. And in order to be successful, it requires a plan. It requires a plan of action. It requires strategy. It requires being prepared because every genre of life, we see that if you're going to produce and if you're going to be successful, you need a plan of success in order to reach the top. Just take a moment and think about this. In every genre of life, well now, let's talk about sports. If you have a team, whatever team it is, they are now practicing. The coach is making strategy. The coaches are meeting and going over game plans. They are huddling up with the team and every team member has an assignment. I say every member on the team has an assignment and they go and rehearse these plays. They practice these plays and they are looking to execute on the field. You know why? Because they have made plans and preparations in order to be successful and secure the wind at the end of competition. Well, even in the business world, who goes into the idea of being an entrepreneur, starting your own business or working in a corporation? Who goes into that endeavor saying that they're looking to take a loss? No one does. Meeting in boardrooms, uh, long meetings, long laborious hours, trying to secure maximum productivity at the end of the day. It requires what? A strategy. It requires a plan. Even in the academic realm, when we start school, we have a plan in mind of where we would like to be in three years, four years, five years, 10 years, 15 years. We go into that matriculation, but we don't go empty. What do we do? We have a plan. We have academic advisors who try to keep us on the plan and the rate of graduation because at the end of the day, we see ourselves walking across that stage with diploma in hand. Come on, help me lift this up just a little bit higher on tonight, family. If we know that it requires a plan to be successful in all of these areas of life, then we ought to equally know that if we're going to be successful in the spirit realm, we need a plan of action. Come on. This is going to get real, real good. Developing your winning strategy. We discussed on last week as we pitched our tent in Second Chronicles, the 17th chapter, we're meeting a man by the name of King Jehoshaphat. Well, who is King Jehoshaphat? King Jehoshaphat is the fourth king of Judah. And of course, he is the son of King Asa and his mother, Azubah. He reigns for 25 years, some 900 years before the coming of the Messiah. It was King Jehoshaphat who was a descendant of King David and having reigned even 100 years after David's death, makes up his mind to serve the same God as his forefather. Of course, the kingdom has split and Israel has fallen into idolatry while Judah has not yet fallen, but are still holding on to the word of God. 
And so Jehoshaphat is now trying to bring a resurgence and even a revival to the people of God. He's trying to restore faith in the one true living God. And in order to do this, he then adopts a strategy and he adopts God's plan. Listen, let me plug in here parenthetically that if we're going to be successful in this walk called life, we need the plan of God in order to make heaven our home. Come on. We cannot make up the plan for heaven ourselves because we've never been to heaven and we're trusting on God and his grace to get us there. This suggests that we need a plan. Listen, if you invite me over to your house and uh, I've never been before, then you give me the directions turn by turn of how to get there. What do I look like saying I'm not going to look or listen to these directions? I take that plan, I throw it out of the window, and I say I know how to get to your house. Never been there, but I'm going to figure it out on my own. Come on. I hear somebody talking. Well, we have GPS these days, and you're absolutely right. But what if I turned off GPS? And I said, you know what? I don't need any instructions. I don't need anyone guiding me. I'm going to figure this out for myself. Never been to your house a day in my life, but I'm going to figure it out for myself because I'm just so smart and I have this innate ability where I will not be lost. Doesn't make very much sense, does it? But maybe that's how God feels about us. When we say that we can find our way to him, yet we've never taken a trip to heaven there before. Come on, somebody ought to help me preach. If we've never been to heaven, how are we going to tell God the way to get there? Just seems like to me we ought to listen to the one who lives there and trust him for the right directions because he has traveled this road before. Oh, talk to me and hear somebody. King Jehoshaphat does several things that I think we have to do even today and we can learn from his life so that we can be successful, so that our families will be successful, and so that we'll have a more pleasant time while living on this side of eternity. Now, we went on record on last week and we made a few observations. And the first observation that we made is that King Jehoshaphat chose to walk in God's favor. I said he chose to walk in God's favor. Uh, to walk in God's favor, life is about choices. Come on, someone plug that into the live chat. Life is about choices. It's about making choices. It's about making the right choices. It's about making solid choices. It's about making Choices, the right choices at the right times. Amen. It's about thinking through things, being prudent in our actions, prudent in our decision making and weighing the benefits and or losses of making this decision or another. We must, as people of God family, choose to walk with the Lord. Now, there are a lot of options in the world. We can choose to walk according to our own ways, our own desires. We can listen to someone else, uh, but we have a choice. And if we're going to make heaven our home, we need to choose to walk in God's favor. Now, what does that look like, preacher? I hear you say, walk in God's favor, choose to walk in God's favor. But what does that look like? Good question. We went on record on last week and we said, you know, in order to walk in God's favor, what does that mean? It means this. It means that I choose to walk where God is blessing and I don't expect for God to bless necessarily where I'm walking. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So I cannot come up with my own concoction, plan, or strategy of life and say, you know what? I'm going to figure it out for myself. I'm going to do it this way. And then here I am expecting God to bless my situation, 
but uh, I get upset and frustrated when he chooses not to bless my situation, but maybe it's because I haven't chosen him. And when I don't choose to walk in his favor, I can't get mad at God because he hasn't blessed my mess because God never promised to bless my mess. I need to check my motives. I need to check my steps. I need to check my desire, my ambition. And I need to ask myself the question, am I wanting God to bless where I'm walking or am I choosing to walk where God is blessing? <laughs> Family, is it's just this simple. You know, uh, there's a sidewalk out along the property, out near the street. Now, on either side of the sidewalk, there's grass. It rains. Now, where there was grass, of course, it becomes what? Muddy. Now, there's a sidewalk, and then there's mud on either side. Where do you think I wish to walk? You think I'm going to step off into the grass when I don't have to? I'm not going to deviate from the path or the plan because someone thought it necessary to put a walkway down. Shouldn't I have enough common sense? Shouldn't I have enough reasonability uh, in my mind? Can't I reason and see that there's a sidewalk and it's put there for a reason? Come on, family. Let's lift this up a little higher. There's a way that God has laid for the righteous and the righteous see and identify the way that God is blessing and they choose to walk therein. You see, we live in a society where a lot of times we want to take matters into our own hands. We want to do it our way. And the next thing you know, we mess it up bad. And when we blow it, then we want God to restore it. But sometimes we have to what? My mother used to say this. If you make your bed hard, sometimes the Lord will allow you, yeah, to lie in it. <laughs> if you make your bed hard, sometimes you have to lay in it. Listen, when it comes to my life, I have a choice on whether or not I'm going to serve God, whether or not I'm going to walk with God, whether or not I'm going to reverence God. Why wouldn't I choose to walk with him when blessings are laid before me? And then on last week, the second observation that we made, it's right here in the text. And that is, we must choose to set God as our spiritual compass. Listen, we have access unto God. The question is, are we choosing to follow him. Now, I want to go on record because everybody is led by something or someone. I say everyone, everybody is led by something or someone. We're either led by other people, we either lead ourselves, or we're either led by God. Amen? Now, when it comes to allowing God uh, to be our spiritual compasses. It means that God is consistent with what he says. A compass is consistent with what it puts out. The information should be the same every time. Now, when I say the information should be the same every time, I'm saying that the standard by which the information is derived never changes. Amen. It's set. It's solid, and that's why you don't get lost when you use your compass. Now, I know that compasses, if they're made by man, they are mechanical, and they are subject to ruin, breakdown, and even need for repair. But check this out, family. We're not talking about a physical compass. We're talking about a spiritual compass. We're talking about God directing the steps of his own. Are you with me? Who in here can't trust God? I mean, who in here can find someone better to trust other than God? We have to choose to set our spiritual compasses and allow God to lead our lives. Now, listen, if you watched last week, I know you're talking. I can hear you. 
Uh, we went over this last week. Well, I wanted to put additional application on this study. And not only just application, but I want to give us another observation of the text. Are you ready for this? Just one more. Verse number five of Second Chronicles 17. The Bible reads, Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. And all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance. Listen to the text. The Bible says, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. Now, someone take a moment, plug into the live chat. We have a weight problem. <laughs> Come on, come on, somebody. We have a weight problem. Now, we're not talking about W-E-I-G-H-T. We're speaking of W-A-I-T. We have a weight problem. Our situations of life many times are exacerbated to be even bigger than what they have to be, all because... Sometimes we have a problem waiting on the Lord. Are you with me on tonight? Listen, who can admit that at times they've had weight problems? Come on, come on, come on in here. Sometimes we've had weight issues. We want it so badly. And if we can't get it when we want it, we will go out and create something that we really didn't have to create. We must realize that as children of the king, we don't have to take matters into our own hands. We can trust the Lord and prepare the plan, but choose God to work the plan. Are you with me? Yeah, sometimes we make decisions on a whim, or sometimes we make it uh, and don't use good judgment when exercising those decisions and executing the plans of life because we're in a hurry to put our hands on it. But the text says that the Lord established the kingdom and anytime we wait on the Lord, anytime we wait on the Lord, he always gives us the best strategy that will help our souls, amen? It may feel like we're uh, losing out on time, but God knows exactly how much time you have remaining. Are you with me? God knows how much time is still left on the clock. Don't rush God. Don't get in a hurry. He'll come. You don't have to worry. Trust in the Lord. It's right here in the text. The text tells us that Jehoshaphat was blessed with abundance. Come on. I said he was blessed in abundance all because the Lord established his kingdom. We have blessings as God's people, but we have to learn to wait on God. Don't get in a hurry and do like Sarah and Abraham and go ahead and uh, try to help God out. God doesn't need our help. He desires our obedience. Are you with me? King Jehoshaphat, he trusted in God. And you know, that's what, when the Bible says, and the Lord established his kingdom, that's what it takes in order for God to establish us. It takes trust. You see, when we get in a hurry and we rush and we do things and we try to help God out, we're showing a lack of belief or a lack of trust on our end. We're saying that, yeah, God, you said it, but, uh, I believe that I can make this happen a little faster. And the next thing you know, we're caught up in a jam. Developing the winning strategy. Well, I pray that this message has blessed your soul. And if it has, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone else. God wants to bless them too, just like he's blessing you. Now, if you'd like to partner with us in prayer or Bible study, don't hesitate to give us a call. The number is there at the bottom of the screen. We enjoy hearing from the community and we enjoy partnering with you in prayer. 
And now as we sign off, as we start another week, we pray that you have a peaceful, prosperous, and productive week. And always remember that right here at South Union, hey, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord and we'll see you on Wednesday night. Take care and God bless.